Jack Hanna's Into the Wild is brought to you by the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, touching the heart to teach the mind for over 80 years. Let's go see some animals! Hi everybody, I'm Jungle Jack Hanna, coming to you from my home, the Columbus Zoo. Today we're on the lookout for bears, but the question is, will we find them? We'll trek into the woods. Follow expert researchers. Look at this, man, look at this. This is unbelievable. And who knows what we'll see along the way. Oh, jeez, oh, man. That's a stupid idea. Grizzly bears and more. It's all coming up when we go into the wild. I've been in Montana probably 26 years and up in northern Montana, northwestern Montana for almost 13 years. We have a lot of wildlife in Montana, beautiful wildlife, but the first question everybody asks me is about the grizzly bear. Not just the black bear, but the grizzly bear. They think of grizzly bear as something that's gonna come after them when they're hiking or look for them. You get hit by lightning before you ever encounter a grizzly bear hiking. But these bears, when they come down in the fall, especially toward the fall, the bears now are fattening up for winter. They kind of go into hibernation, a deep sleep in the winter. Then in the summer, man, they're out there looking for food. Not for people, for food. Some bears can go their entire lifetime without ever eating meat. But every once in a while, we do have problems with grizzly bears. People leave out cat food for their cat or dog food. Or let's say they uh, have chickens and they feed chickens their chicken feed. And that's exactly what happened at this little farm. Located on the edge of Glacier National Park, two nights before, a grizzly bear had smelled the chicken feed in this coop and came down here 100 feet from the house to check it out. And this bear came down to just eat the chicken feed. He wasn't gonna eat the chickens. And the bear gets up there and he sees the chickens in there. He get ready to eat the feed. He swats to the chicken and tastes the chicken and goes, man, I'm gonna eat some more chickens. So he eats six or seven chickens. Next night he said, I'm gonna come back and eat chicken. I'm not gonna eat the chicken feed. But the bear didn't know that the family was ready for his return because they called the Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks who put them in touch with an amazing guy named Tim Manley. Hey Tim, how you doing? Good Jack, how are you doing? I see you again. Good seeing you. Tim is noted not just in Montana, but all over this country for relocating bears. And Tim immediately called me saying that they'd gotten a grizzly bear to trap the night before. And sure enough, in that big shiny metal barrel, there was a 500 pound grizzly. Tim and his associate, Lindsay, took me to see it. The thing with these types of bears is they don't want to be discovered by people, and so they tend to come in at night. And this bear came in last night, they think around 10.30, they, after it got dark, they heard the door go down on the trap, and that's probably when it came in and got caught. Can I look at him? Yeah, definitely. Sure. Oh, jeez, oh man, that's a stupid idea. He's a adult male grizzly bear in his prime. When we caught him a couple years ago, he was six, he's eight years old now, and. He's probably uh, what you say? four to 500 pounds. Sam, let me out. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll let you out. We're taking you to another place right now. There won't be any chickens there, but you're a lot of berries, OK? OK. <laughs> and now you think you're going to take him and, and release him down where? Down in the Swan Valley, more into his home range. Uh, the berries are really good down in that area, and he's familiar with that country. So we'll release him down there. We'll monitor him down there and uh, see how he does. It was great for us to tell this story because it's just a true story. This isn't any setup thing. This was a true story of a family just living their normal life that loved their surroundings, they loved nature, and they loved wildlife. Not like it could have been some people who say, that bear's gotta get out of here. These bears have to be killed. This is not right for the bears to be here. Well, I hate to say anything, but the bears have been here for thousands of years, way before we were here. And as we encroach on this area, the bears have to come and eat. And they understood that. And I asked the woman, I said, aren't you upset? No. We have numerous bears around here every year. Just make some noise, and they don't bother anything. This so, is the first time we've ever been bothered by a bear. I'm amazed at this bear, because I've seen the power these bears oh, have. Oh, yeah. I mean, he these bears, in there, but, but the bears there. know that you're in there, I think. They know that. Did you hear him doing this? No. That's what I'm saying. That Tim knows this bear could come in here and take this tin roof and popped it like a marshmallow. Oh, yeah. yeah. But this bear, he gets up there with his claws that are that long, and just daintily kind of peels back the chicken wire, gets in and eats the chickens, and no one's even known it. 
If a bear wanted to go there in five seconds, smash it, he'd know there'd be too much noise. That's how smart these animals are. Well, it's good to have people like Tim Manley come here and give the bear hope oh, another chance here. I'll tell you what, I'm glad. I looked at him, he looks so sad. He's got his head all down. He looks like a dog that just got in trouble, you know. I'm sure like Tim will find a great place for him to go to. Oh yeah, I'm sure he will. Yeah. Tim's a good guy. And with that, Tim started on the long drive to return the grizzly to his home range. We'll meet up with him a little later. Coming up. Exactly, how does the door work? How does this thing work? <laughs> oh, holy mackerel. Next, on Into the Wild. We're in northern Montana, going face to face with one of North America's most misunderstood mammals, the grizzly bear. Tim Manley, who captured a grizzly at a family's home near Glacier National Park, is on his way to the Swam Valley to release the bear into his home range. But first, I've got a date to meet two other grizzly experts and trappers, Derek and Heather Reich. They often work with Tim, as well as the Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Foundation. And so I got a call from them saying, hey, Jack, come on up here. We're going to be checking traps and everything, and we want to show you how we do this uh, with some cameras and all kinds of equipment the Columbus Zoo had bought for them for their research. So we're really excited about seeing what we had bought for them to help save the bears up there. Hey, how you hey, doing? Jack. Good to see you. No, I don't do that. She scared the fire out of me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Hi there. Super. We're just checking our site today. We had a visitor, but nothing got caught. I said, well, what is it? He said, a mountain lion came in here, pulled on the meat and everything, never took it. We have it all on your cameras at the Columbus Zoo. I said, I don't believe it. We it's haven't crazy. seen this. Every time we come in, it's like Christmas. You never know what we're going to find on these things. Man, I hope it's not some squirrel. Oh, I see oh, something. What is that? There's our cat. Right no, it there. is not. I knock yeah, it off. Right. Look at this, man. Look at this. He was sitting right there on the deck Magnificent of that trap. Magnificent footage. So let's What the people at the zoo see this? Now we can actually what? back it up. There we'll he goes. Mountain lion. We're not talking about some cat. Look at this. Didn't this excite you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've not had cats at a trap before, so this is kind of unusual. We're trying to trap well, bears, not cats. Size of that cat is some small cat. What's really great about this, Jack, is if we didn't have this camera system, we wouldn't know exactly what was coming into the site. And since we have these camera systems, we can see that actually this is a mountain lion and nothing we actually want to trap. Now, what makes this camera go off? You just start a certain time of day? Nope, I'll show you. There he is. Wait a minute, that cat just jumped in that barrel. Yeah, sure he's, he triggered it. He triggered oh, the he camera. Triggered, oh, I see, of course, he triggered it. The, the animals are actually the photographers. They what are time was this day? It's total daylight. That's at 8.17 p.m. last night. He doesn't know he's being photographed. Let me show you the motion sensor over here. Yeah. Show you how this thing works. The animal is triggering the camera by his own movements. This is a motion sensor. And this sensor here will pick up heat and motion. It has to have both. That way we heat and motion. So animals emit body temperature, body heat. And their motion, the combination of both of those will trigger the camera to come on. So if a frog jumps in there to get him? Nope, because I can program this to oh, be specific to the size of an animal. I got you, okay. So I've got it programmed for something big. We want bears, so we've got it programmed for something big. These lights will come on only during nighttime. We use red filters because the red light doesn't affect night vision, so animals aren't as disturbed by it. It doesn't affect their night vision. The animal triggers this. This turns on the camera. So let's go take a look at the camera. You can imagine over the years what they've gotten on their video cameras in the wild. They never know it's going to be on those cameras. We had amazing footage that we've never had before of a grizzly bear and a wolf actually feeding on a moose carcass right next to each other. The cameras allow us to see behaviors that we've never seen before, I think primarily because since there's no human involved, the animals are completely at ease. I saw the footage, but what, exactly how does the door work? How does this thing work? What we've got tied in the front there is some deer, right. which is what we want the bears to come in on. And then it's tied to this little pin through the back. So there's this pin here. And then all the bear has to do is come in and pull on that. And the way it works is magically. <laughs> this pin gets pulled out and the door serious? drops. See, go and look at yeah, that go see how that is. Golly day, this is amazing. So sure enough, I go in there and the smell about blew my nose off. Woo-hoo, buddy, I'm gonna tell you, a roadkill two weeks, that's powerful. She always smells me, I'm gonna go in the like this. Oh! Oh! Holy mackerel! How you doing hey, in there, Jack? We're done now, we're gonna be heading. Yeah, it's lunchtime, I gotta get going. We'll be back in a little while, if that's okay. 
And I said, okay, open up the door, everybody. This game's over with, okay? Oop, I gotta pull this. Don't tell me it's broken. It's broken. Oh, I no. I can't get it <laughs> I'm serious, Derek. Please, tell me it's not broken. All right. This See, now if, in there. if you were a bear, we'd be yelling at you. Get out of here, bear. Go on. Oh, good puppies. <laughs> Tell you something, I gotta check my pants. That thing slammed out, I'm gonna jump down my pants. <laughs> that is unbelievable. We've now got on tape numbered of times a bear able to stick his foot out of the trap while he grabbed the bait, triggering the door, but was able to push the door up with his back foot and get out. Uh, never seen that happen before, but now we've, we've got it on tape. You know, once I'd gotten out of the trap, I really appreciated the, what Derek and Heather and all these folks were doing to make sure the bear's safety was the first in mind. At this point, no tranquilization, no darts or anything else for, for any of the animal that would have gotten in there. And their safety is our number one priority for the bear and for themselves. And boy, I'll tell you, they have every bit of it covered. Now, I know that we've, we've worked with Tim and, and helped with problem bears. And that's one thing. But up here, I can't see anything be a problem up here because there's nobody up here. Why are you so adamant about this bear? Try and get these bears. What we're trying to do is find a, a female bear, and she can't have cubs, and she can't be like that bear that we met that's a problem bear. Right. What we want to do is we're in a very healthy population of grizzlies right here where we're standing, but we have a mountain range quite a ways away from here to the west right. that has a population of grizzlies that isn't doing very well. Right. So we're trying to find some female bears to take over and help that population out. Now what's this? For here, this one. Jack, this one's kind of fun. This camera's pointed at what we call a bear bath. Uh -huh. It's a naturally occurring small body of water, little pond over Oh, right there. there, yeah. So it'll tell us what animals might be just moving through the area. We're not very far from our trap. Yeah. So we might be able to tell if there's some animals that have been in the area, maybe haven't been to our trap yet. Have you looked at this yet? No, no, let's take a look and see. We had I mean, some I'd like to be the first. Oh, look at that. Look at you that. got something? We got a bear Holy in the bear bath. Oh. This is unbelievable. Look at him in there. No wonder you guys love this. Bear just comes in, jumps in the water, rolls around. Uh, Let me go all the way back. I don't believe this. Right, no wonder you all get excited. No, oh. These cameras that Zoo provided, I'm going to tell you something. Oh, Jack, there's so much neat stuff that we see on these cameras. I'm just so proud that the Columbus Zoo supports projects like this around the world. And thanks to people like Derek and Heather, we now know what some of these animals are doing. And with all this footage of things that we would never see, and now we can learn about the animals more in the wild. Coming up on End of the Wild. He's gonna pull the rope up and the bear oh, should just come running out. That bear said, woohoo, I'm home, buddy. We're driving off the beaten path here in northwestern Montana. Inside this bear trap, there's a 500 pound grizzly that was captured last night just 30 yards from a family farmhouse. He had raided the hen house and then flew the coop. And now, our bear experts, Tim Manley, Heather and Derek Wright, are traveling 60 bumpy miles to release the bear into his home range. Now, I'll tell you one thing, it's a long way to the middle of nowhere. And we drove, and we drove, and we drove. Tim said, we gotta get away from people. Turned off the main road, the Swan Highway, and went up into the Swan Range. But the important thing is that Tim already knew from the radio collar and the number of the bear, where the bear had to go back to before I was even involved in it. And finally, we went up there, I said, man, this looks pretty good. Creeks up there, blueberries up there, everything in the world, any bear, including myself, would like to eat. So the first thing we do when we arrive in the barrel, Tim tells us exactly what's gonna be done. Well, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna rig it up so that we can uh, pull this door up with a pulley. Right now, it's locked shut. All right. So there's no way for this to come up until everybody's in a vehicle, and then we pull this lock off right. and uh, set it to pull. So we have our camera crew with three cameras, and I think Derek and Heather had about four or five cameras. Anyway, in all, we had about eight cameras out there. Every kind of route we thought the bear would take, we tried to put a camera. That's okay, buddy. That's okay, you'll be home here in just a second. Man, he is big. Wow. Another thing the bear was doing, he's going, oh, let's see. No, this is what he's doing, he's going, real loud like that. And that isn't good. Uh, well, if, if the trap wasn't there and he's going, that means Jack's going here. Uh, but that would have been my fault. Obviously. At that point, him ties a rope to it, a very strong rope, and pulls the rope over yep. the barrel, over the truck that's pulling the, the, the barrel, and then back down over another truck. Man, I don't want to screw this up. I can tell you that right now. And it attaches it to a door underneath the door. 
we close it in the door of the truck and then pull forward and pull the door up. And then if we need to leave in a hurry, all I have to do is open the door of the truck and it'll release the rope and drop the door and we're free to go. If we tied it off on the truck, we'd be stuck. The ropes and pulleys were attached. All the cameras were set up and loaded. We were just about ready to go. But first, Derek and Heather had brought along a couple of assistants. These are Carilion bear dogs. They do so many things for us, Jack. They scare the bears. They'll help us track the bears if we need to track the bears. They help us out on our trap line, let us know if a bear is right there in the area. Right. So these are our puppies. They're learning all of the tricks of the trade right now. We're going to find the bear. Find the bear. Now, I know what this is going to look like, but trust me, what these dogs are about to do may save this grizzly's life. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't no bear, but it scared me. The bear is not enjoying this at all, being barked at. And ideally, if this bear goes back down to other neighborhoods or towards other people's houses, if he hears barking dogs, he'll be scared and he'll run away. Well, so this is actually training this bear. Yeah, ideally, the next time he hears a dog barking, he's going to go the other way. After they got the dogs trained a little bit about on the bears, uh, the dogs were put back. At that point, Tim showed us what to do with the cars, turn the engines on, shut our doors, and that type of thing. They run around, turn their cameras on, get inside their vehicles. Uh, Tim then is the last one after he says, everybody okay, checked out. He gets in his vehicle. You know something, what's amazing, you don't know if it's gonna be one second, 10 seconds, or an hour. But this didn't take long, this took seconds. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. So now, right now, the front vehicle in front of your truck is pulling the door up, correct? Yep, he's going to pull the rope up. The trap's attached to my truck. And the door will go up. And the bear oh, should just go. come running out. Whoa. And that bear shot out of there like a cannon. Immediately, Tim and Derek jumped out of their trucks. Go on, bear! Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on, bear! Well. Pow, 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 that kind of stuff. They said that they want the bear to learn that this is not the place to be. Get away from human beings. And sure enough, man, when we looked at the footage, several cameras got the bear being released. And it was beautiful, not just to see what we'd gotten on film, but to see that the joy I had of seeing that bear free again in his homeland. That was just absolutely amazing. I just want to thank you for all the dedication, for, for educating all of us people, as well as helping save the bear's lives. Oh, you're welcome, and we're glad that you're able to come out with us. And uh, the whole idea is to keep the bears alive and in the wild. I think the important thing about bear conservation is the fact that a grizzly bear is an icon species. And it's very simple. We have to save the grizzly bear in order to save all these other animals that fall in line. This has to succeed. What Derek, what Heather, what Tim Manley are doing, they're doing a great job. Without the work that they do, these animals just will not have a chance. Rely heavily on ice for pretty much everything they do. The biggest threat to them right now is the decrease in ice. Next on Into the Wild. Jack Hanna's Into the Wild is brought to you by the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, touching the heart to teach the mind for over 80 years. Let's go see some animals! <laughs> Grizzly bears may not be at risk today, but there are other bears that aren't so fortunate. The Columbus Zoo is on a mission to help. The Columbus Zoo has forged a strong partnership with Polar Bears International, a nonprofit organization looking for ways to conserve polar bears through scientific research and education. The work being done in zoological parks and in the wild is providing insight into the challenges these magnificent animals face. Polar bears rely heavily on ice for pretty much everything they do. They rely on it for breeding, for feeding, and in most cases also for their maternity dens. The ice is melting at a rapid rate. They're losing about three weeks of ice in the last 15 years. The biggest threat to them right now is the decrease in ice. They're not having enough time to do the hunting that they need to hunt to get through the harsh Arctic winters. By becoming an Arctic ambassador, the Columbus Zoo and Polar Bears International hope to bring real life solutions closer to home. There are many little things that you can do. Unplug your things at home that you're not using all the time. You can buy recycled and planting trees is a huge thing. 
We're going to challenge each person who comes to the zoo to become an Arctic ambassador, and it's kind of like a chain effect. My son says little hands can make a difference all the time, and it, and it really is true, even when you feel like things are too overwhelming. If each of us does our small part, we can make a huge difference for the bears. Thanks for joining us today in our search for bears. You know what? I'm fine with this view of them from right here. From the Columbus Zoo, I'm Jack Hanna. Hoping you'll come along next time when we go into the wild.